The Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association presents Freshman Focus. A look at two-year-olds in training across the Buckeye State. Freshman Focus is presented by Sugar Valley Farm. Looking for your next quality standard bred racehorse? Look no further than Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio. And by Eldorado Scioto Downs. Now racing Tuesday through Saturday. First post time, 6.15. Now here's your host, OHHA brand ambassador, Roger Houston. Welcome to another edition of Freshman Focus. Presented by the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association here on Facebook and YouTube as we take a look at the two-year-olds throughout the state of Ohio. Today we're in Northfield with trainer Rosie Weaver. Rosie, we welcome you to the broadcast and you've got a stable of eight two-year-olds, all Ohio breads and all trotters. Yes, I have eight trotting babies this year. Um... I worked for Jimmy Smith at Flowing Mineral Farms, and all we ever did was trotters. We had nothing but two and three-year-old trotting colts. So I don't have much experience with pacers, so I'm gonna try and stick to the trotting babies. Have you raced pacers, though, in your stable in the past? Yes, I have, and I have uh, multiple pacers in the barn, mostly aged horses. I have a three-year-old racing hill filly that is about a week away from qualifying. She trained down super last year, and uh, then she got sick right as it was time to qualify, and we got a few starts in her, but turned her out early, and I think she's got a chance to be a nice filly this year. How did Rosie Weaver get started in the business, your first uh, knowledge of harness racing? Um, I grew up on a farm, and when I got out of school, I was looking for a job, and growing up on the farm, I always loved horses. Um, riding horses, draft horses, any horse really. And um, there was a lady, Ruby Hosteller, she was had an ad in the local paper for uh, a job as a groom for the Standard Breds. And that's where I first got my first taste and I ended up working over there as a groom and it just really sprouted from there. How long have you been training a stable of horses? Um, I've been on my own for about 14 years now, had a small stable of just six or eight um, all trotters, but no babies, just aged horses. Basically cheap trotters that people gave up on. And uh, I played around with them and tried to figure them out and get them going. And I think that is really what led me into being able to do the trotting colts now. Um, I took a lot of patience to get the cheap trotters that big stables kind of let go and gave up on. Rosie Weaver is one of those few lady trainers that actually drives. You're very comfortable out there in a race bike. Yes, I absolutely just love driving, um, preferably the young ones. And I'll be driving a lot at the fairs, hopefully, this summer. Uh, the way the babies are training down, I'll be out there quite a bit. Um, just trying to teach them to not get too hot and just become little racehorses. And then if they make it the next step, I can hand the reins over to somebody that really knows what they're doing. Now, you mentioned the fairs. Uh, any of your horses in the Buckeye Stallion Series or Ohio Sire Stake uh, races? Yes, I have. Um, I stake five two-year-olds to the Sire Stakes. Um, as of uh, March 15th, they were doing everything I asked, uh, basically everything I let them do. Um, very talented. So um, I staked them to the Sire Stake, and then I have actually all eight of them staked to the Buckeye. And as of right now, if I had to answer, I would have to guess maybe five of the eight look very legit. Can you tell early if they're County Fair, Buckeye Stallion, or Ohio Sire Stakes? Yes, very much so. Um, I have one colt, the DeJambro. His name's a handsome face. And he just, from day one, he just had a different attitude, a different walk, really different. He just stands out among the crowd. Um, he's like a grown adult compared to the others, and he just does everything so professionally. He just, to me, is like a standout and just wants to do everything every day correct. In this group of eight, you've probably got one that's giving you some fits and maybe even changing your hair color a bit. You know, I did look in the mirror the other day and I saw quite a few gray hairs and I 
I think I know where it comes from. I got a triumphant caviar filly that just uh, very frustrating, um, very challenging, but she's taught me a lot of patience, which definitely helps in a barn full of trotters, but she's she's got a lot of talent, very much. I mean, very, very talented. And um, she's just wild. I mean, she's just spooks from everything. And one day she might do good, the next she won't. And you're just pulling your hair out, trying to figure out what you did wrong. But it just it just takes time to mature. And the light's really coming on for her. She's I think she's going to be OK. Of the eight, they're all trotters, of course. Do you train them in sets when you actually get to the point that you're training them? Yes. Uh, for the most part, um, I usually train in two, sometimes sets of three. Um, there's the odd one, like the one we just talked about, Gracious Triumph. She's really nervous, and it's very hard for her to focus. She gets really keyed up around other horses, so I was training her down myself, just by herself, to try and just teach her how to just trot. And she's come to the point now where the last two weeks we've trained, and I've trained her with another horse, and she's set on his back and did everything I asked her to. It just goes to show how much she's really come, how far she's really become. I noticed in the horses that you took out today, none of them were wearing overchecks. Yeah, I know. People probably think it's a little crazy. Um, I get some looks up here at Northfield because uh, probably the only person that's got eight babies and literally all of them have had no overchecks to jog. Um, they wear overchecks to train. Uh, for the most part, they head pulls, line pulls. I like to get them used to all that stuff, tongue ties. And if they get a get frustrated or have a, a fit about anything, um, very much more controllable with a, an overcheck. And they'll trot in a straighter line trying to train down and stuff. But I like to keep them very relaxed and very happy um, on a daily basis if they're not training, just to keep them interested and happy and ready to go. You mentioned relax. Uh, here at Northfield, you've got the, the jog track real close to your barn. you got the main track. They seem more relaxed on the jogging track. Yeah, overall, they, they're a lot better out back. It's just not as much going on. It's just more laid back. But there are the odd few that are actually better on the big track. Um, I got a triumphant caviar colt that's a lot better on the front track. He just relaxes so much more up there. So... But overall, for the most part, the backtrack will keep them a lot calmer. The seasons for the two-year-old start in June. How do you know where to start them? County fairs, stallion series, or sire stakes? Well, from my experience on uh, on that answer would be like training down with Jimmy Smith and the, the Colts that we had. Um, I got to kind of feel out the talent that you were training. And I think if once you get down to about 225, you can kind of pick them apart on which one's going to go on pretty good or who's going to be stuck on just being a fair horse. But there's really nothing wrong with, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with uh, being just a fair horse their first year. Sometimes I think they actually learn more and, and get more mature if you just bring them on late and slow and just try to teach them a little bit for that year and you have a very, very nice three-year-old. So if I understand what you're saying, uh, primarily the fairs, maybe, uh, unless you have an exceptional one uh, for the two-year-old season. Hopefully, a good three-year-old can jump up into the Stallion Series or the Sire States. Yeah, and as far as, as to answer your question on the last one there, uh, the two-year-olds, I have a few that, that I think if they continue to do what they're doing and, and if I can keep them sound, I think we'll have a few that will be a step above the fair stakes. And what's this? A stable mascot? You've got a goat? Yes, we have Frankie in the barn. Um, he's actually pretty famous on Facebook by now. Um, we're uh, next to Amy Holler here, and she's got a lot of videos of Frankie growing up. Um, I actually got him to put in a stall with a horse that had just one eye, and she would stall walk and was very uncomfortable in her stall. And that's where Frankie came in and he did really good at, at staying with her and keeping her calm, and I sold her. So now this year, um, Elegant Gigi was actually sick with the ulcers early, and we couldn't get her to eat. And the little mascot's got a new home. He stays with Elegant Gigi every night, and he does phenomenal because she's she's eating good. She's training good. She's way more relaxed. They literally sleep side by side. It's just it's pretty cool. Is it? 
Well, I know you couldn't put two horses in the same stall, but is it companionship that's a big thing for some horses? I think so. I think they get kind of mopey, and I don't know if you would call it sour, but just, you know, I'd get bored in a stall daily, too. Um, and I think if they have an issue, like if their stomach, for example, ulcers or some kind of something's bugging them, they tend to, to get more uneasy in a stall. And then if you have, like, a companion, like my goat, it just... I don't know what it does, but it just makes a giant difference. Like she, he goes up to try and get her grain and that doesn't work out very well because he just run to the corner of the stall and he can get the leftovers when she's done. But it, it kind of makes her eat. It, it just works very good. I saw him when we first got here. He was going from stall to stall, feed tub to feed <laughs> tub, uh, being sure that they were totally empty. Oh yeah, he keeps an eye on the feed tubs if we hang them out. Pretty soon there's grain, if there is any in there, that's on the ground and he's nibbling around. But he'll, there's there's an odd horse. I got one horse in the barn that um, if he goes in her stall, it doesn't end well. Um, we got the gate down, so basically to save Frankie's life because I'm pretty sure he'd be gone. But for over, overall, for the most part, the horses actually really enjoy him. I mean, they all like him. They play with him. He headbutts them. They, they headbutt back. It's, it's really a show sometimes. Well, thanks, Rosie, for giving us a few minutes to sit down and talk about your young horses. I think it's about time we move into the barn area and take a look at some of these young two-year-olds in the Rosie Weaver stable. A handsome face. I will say this. A handsome face. What's the reading on this one, Rosie? He's a DeJambro colt. He and got any relatives or anything he's like got that? Uh, Ron Burke had his three-year-old sister last year and she had a record of 52 I believe at Lexington so and the two-year-old trotted in 56 last year as a two-year-old both fillies this is the first colt out of the mare yeah and uh, probably the pick of of the bunch I have here for sure what sale did you get him out of the select sale select yeah in Ohio. Mm -hmm. the high select how high did you have to go on him with that well, breeding yeah and with the sisters he's got we had to give 26000 for him. Do you have a range of prices for the horses that you want for your stable? Yes, I do, and uh, a pretty tight budget on the ones I own myself. Mm -hmm. um, this is an owner's horse. I own a little piece of them, but um, for myself, I try to go between 5 and 15 mm -hmm. That's kind of my range I can spend for myself, but this one went above that level, but I think he'll be worth it. Do you like to own a piece of all the horses you got? I do. I do. It, uh, I don't know. It just drives me more. They're all, you know, like mm -hmm. they're all a part of me and the whole stable. And even if I don't, I still do the best I can, obviously. But it just, yeah, I really would like to own a piece of all of them if I could afford to. A handsome face. Well, this is going to be a good one when we get to the races. Dippity boppity blue. Making it rough on the announcers, aren't you? I hope so. I hope they'll get tired of saying her name. I hope she's going to make it. I love this little filly. She's a, a DeJambro as well, my favorite Ohio sire. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, name her? I did not. So, and I, I'm keeping her name because it's obviously <laughs> pretty cool. It stands out. Yes, it, it does. Out. Uh, breeding on it? It's a DeJambro filly. Yeah, yeah, my favorite sire in Ohio. Why is DeJambro your favorite sire? You know, I've had a bunch of them, and luckily, I've done great with literally every one of them. And they're really, um, like, if you don't have patience, you're not going to like the genres because they got the mind of their own, and they're tempered. And But if you let them figure it out on their own, and you get, get them to trust you, they'll just about do anything for you. I mean, they really will. Do women trainers have more patience than the men? Well, I guess they're probably supposed to. I don't know. Um, my answer on that would be yes. <laughs> I think everybody would probably agree with you just because women yeah. are that away. Right. Uh, how's it progressing? Very, very good. She was uh, the cheapest one we bought this year. She's actually my own. Mm -hmm. um, I own her myself, and we gave 6000 for her at the uh, November. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry, the August Delaware sale. She wasn't even in a baby sale. Mm -hmm. Like she just was supposedly not well bred enough and uh, her mom was had about 11 or 12 foals. So she kind of was on the out. So we're trying to prove everybody wrong this year. Wishing it's me, another trotter in the Rosie Weaver stable. Tell us something about this one. 
She's probably got the most talent of the fillies in the barn right now. She's willing to do everything right, everything you ask her to do. She just does very handily. Um, she's training down with the best colt I got, a handsome face. Um, we trained them together in 26 on um, Wednesday. And uh, she's just very willing, maturing like a, a mare instead of a filly. Very smart. she ahead of the game? Yes, I would say so. What's the breeding? She's a wishing stone. The wishing only wishing stone. stone I got, yep. Everyone I've talked to kind of likes their wishing stones. Yeah, so far I have nothing bad to say about them at all. I'd buy four more. I wish you it's me. Gracious triumph. And I guess you're open for a lot of triumphs. I hope so. She's, um, she's probably the one that gives me the most gray hair in the whole stable. Um, she's got... She's really spooky. This is my first year with Triumph of Caviars. Mm -hmm. um, I got three of them, and I've quickly realized they all need some weight to balance out, and a lot of them are real spooky on the track, real nervous, but very talented. And, yeah, she's given me a couple headaches already, but she's really doing good right now, really growing up quick right now. Chris Beaver's done well with Triumph of Caviars. <laughs> Yeah, I doubt I'll ever hold a candle to his success, but we're going to give it a try. This is Gracious Triumph. Rosie, this is a Creatine Deluxe, a Creatine. Yeah, and he's, um, I got two Creatines, a Colt and Philly this year. And um, if I had to pick, um, like, sense-wise, they're by far, they're like old horses. Mm -hmm. They were like that to train down, to break. Uh, very, very sensible, don't do anything wrong, um, very level-headed horses. You're talking about both the colt and the fish. Yes, very much so. Yeah, they're just very smart, just do everything right. This this colt is, um, it wouldn't really matter what you do to him. He's going to do it right every day. Anybody could jog him. He's, if you uh, don't have patience and you still want a trotting colt, you would definitely want him. He just does everything right, very, very nice. Hopefully. A deluxe. I hope so. In the Rosie Weaver stable. Rose Run Exalted. This is a uh, caviar colt as well. He was actually in the November sale at Delaware. He was uh, kept out of both baby sales because of his size. Was very immature, very small, very well bred. Um, so, but they uh, put him in that sale and I liked his video. I thought he looked like a very nice colt. So I went down and I was not going to come home without him, so here he is. You say he was small in size early on, but it looks like he's grown quite a bit then. He is growing into a horse. He's really coming along good. He's probably grown more than any of my colts in the last month. And he's just really growing up and getting a lot of sense. He was really nervous and really spooky first, you know, when we first broke him and stuff. But, yeah, he's just becoming a horse. Is he at the point where he does what you want him to do rather than what he wants to do? Very much so, and he will trot however fast I let him. Rose Run exalted. Shoot for the sky. Uh, looks pretty sharp. Yeah, she's a nice filly. She's a creatine as well. Um, my own. I own her myself. I went to the sale. Um, also liked her video very much. And... Uh, expected that I probably couldn't afford her. And then I ended up giving 9,000 for her and immediately afterward I got like sick to my stomach because I thought I must have missed a bad leg or some kind of flaw because um, I expected her to bring a lot more. And then I went back to her stall and I did not see anything I didn't like and to this day she's doing everything right. Um, very talented, very sensible for a trot and filly. She's also a creatine and uh, like the colt they just very well mannered, very growing up for their age. Rosie Weaver's going to be shooting for the sky. Well, that'll do it from the Rosie Weaver stable here at Northville. Frankie is having a little after race snack. We'll be back with more of Fresh and Focus in a few moments. Looking for your next quality standard bred racehorse? Look no further than Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio. Sugar Valley's lineup of stallions includes world champion Down by the Seaside, 
Lather Up, the fastest horse in harness racing history. Little Brown Jug champion, well said. And the newest stallions to the Sugar Valley lineup, Adios champion, Catch the Fire, and the son of Hambletonian champion, Muscle Hill, Marseille. Sugar Valley Farm, the home of champions. Racing is back at El Dorado Scioto Downs. Catch the excitement all summer long. Live racing every Tuesday through Saturday nights. First post time is at 6.15. Mark your calendar to see the future stars with the $150,000 Next Generation on July 2nd and 3rd. On the 2nd, it's the two-year-old Trotters, followed by the Pacers on the 3rd. Horse players earn points with the new Caesars Reward Program. El Dorado Scioto Downs Live Racing is back. Welcome back to MGM Northfield Park as we continue with today's Freshman Focus. We're with trainer Kent Sherman, and his introduction in harness racing is a bit different than everybody else. His father was an owner of harness horses and president at one time of the Ohio Harness Horsemen Association. Kent Sherman, welcome to today's broadcast of Freshman Focus. Your dad was heavily involved in racing. Yes, he started out uh, just with uh, a couple of brood mares and, and just selling babies and then eventually uh, he and my mom decided, oh, let's try one and keep a, a baby or two and have it trained down and one thing kind of led to another from there and really blossomed into a secondary business. Your father had a career outside of racing and that's how he got hooked up with Walter Michael. Well, when my father first started his uh, accounting business, uh, Walter was a client of his at the big firm where he worked at, and, and he went with my dad, and so that was a wonderful charter client for him. And uh, Walter owned Pickwick Farms, and at one time owned Northfield Park, and he just, over the years, got dad more and more involved in it, and it worked out great. As a youngster, what's your first remembrance of harness racing? Oh boy, uh, probably county fairs actually, uh, but uh, once, once we had some starting to race, we, uh, we were regulars at the racetrack, particularly on weekend nights, uh, usually eat dinner in the clubhouse and watch the horses race, and then uh, also spent a lot of time at the breeding farm when I was even younger, would spend some weekends there and learning how to fold and feed and just do everything, and, and, uh, but then a lot of county fairs probably is the first thing. Was there ever a question as to whether you'd be involved in harness racing? Uh, well, once I really, you know, got bit by the bug, so to speak, I suppose not. Uh, I did, I graduated from Ohio State with, uh, and I had a pre-vet degree, uh, which I ended up not pursuing to, uh, to train horses, so that's how smart I am. Early on in your career, you were a trainer driver. Yeah, you know, drove my own some, uh, just figured out pretty quickly that there's guys better at that than me, so. As far as uh, training, uh, what's probably the biggest memory you've had in the past? Oh, Jesse's Messenger as a two-year-old was undefeated when everything in Ohio, uh, so that that's probably the best. And this year you're training a, a full of Jesse's Messenger. That's right. Uh, she's. She's had one other and it, it raced, but it wasn't great. So we're, we're hoping this one kind of looks a little more like her on the track. You have the homebreds. How many uh, brood mares do you have? Just three now, we're down. Uh, one time there was eight or nine, but uh, as dad's getting a little older, we've scaled that back a little bit. You have five two-year-olds. Uh, four of them are Ohio breds. The two trotters are both fillies and homebreds, the two pacers purchased at the sale, and they are stallions. Is there a method to your madness, or is that just the way it worked out? Just the way it worked out this year. Uh, the, the fillies being what the hills, we actually, uh, my dad bought a share in, the, in that stallion, so we, we bred both, both our trotting mares to him and, and just got fillies. and. Uh, the Colts, I guess I, you know, I didn't want to have all Phillies, so I, I did kind of target Colts at the sale rather than Phillies. Think all four of them's going to make it to the races? Or? I'm very hopeful that they will. Yeah, I mean, a couple of them have already shown me that they. I mean, I think they could, if we wanted to, could qualify at any time, and and the other two, I think, are both going to come. So uh, right now, we're very hopeful. 
the two horses you bought at public auction are both Fear of the Dragons. Was that your intention to get Fear of the Dragon yearlings? I mean, it wasn't him or anything. I was certainly very interested in the horse. I, you know, I have hopes he's going to be a good sire. But, but I would, you know, I looked at some other ones as well. As well, it just, you know, between budget and who you like better individuals, that's how it worked out. After you've got the horses in your barn, the breaking process. Uh, more and more, we hear about uh, trainers sending their uh, youngsters to the Amish to be broke. But you're hands on. I, I do like to break on my own, uh, just that way I know exactly what, what, what's happening with them and, and, and what they're taught and not taught. Uh, the one filly this year I did send down to uh, Wes Hershberger for a couple of weeks because she was being a little tougher than we'd like to deal with, particularly here at the racetrack where you've got a lot of pavement and a lot of slippery block top, things like that. So we did send her out for a little bit, but unless I have a problem they're, where they're really bad, I'd rather do it myself. Tell the folks out there, just what is the process of breaking young horses? Well, there again, if you got a homebred, some of them sometimes are, are hardly touched by human hands, so to speak, when you get them. But you have to look, they have to learn just to stand in the cross ties. Some of them aren't even used to that. Uh, brush them, and then you just start, you know, you put the harness on, and that can be a, an adventure sometimes. And then... Uh, bridle and we'll start out leading the horse around then put the lines on and line driving and uh, then when we think we got that done and we'll hook a cart up and away we go. Approximately how much time has this involved? Well hopefully only a matter of a few days uh, particularly with sail babies now they're they're so smart and so much more handled that I mean I know people that do actually uh, you know, the first day they throw the harness on and, and go right on. I, I usually like to give them a, a day or two, but, but yeah, within a week they should be rolling. Now, is there a difference when you're uh, working with the horses between the, the colts and the fillies? Do you have to treat them differently or? Generally, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to get in trouble, but, you know, fillies are, <laughs> fillies are girls, and we all know how girls can be. And so, I, I think you have to be a little more careful in how you, uh, how you treat them and you can be a little, generally speaking, you can be a little rougher with the colts and, and demand a little more of them. You may not have this on the tip of your tongue, but about how many miles do you go before you actually begin the training process? Oh, probably in the neighborhood of 200, I suppose. Several weeks then. Oh yeah, yeah. When you start going training miles, how fast are you going? When we first turn, well, we'll usually start just jogging the right way and, and doing a little uh, back and forth with mm -hmm. them, just brush them short distances. And then when we finally actually go a mile, you know, as long as they're comfortable, around 250. You really don't pay that much attention to the clock, do you? No, no. It's just what they're comfortable and, you know, let them keep progressing. As you get serious with them, and you start that training process, and we're probably into the months of January or February, uh, do you work them to take home out to, with other horses, or are they by themselves? Yeah, ideally, uh, you know, the bigger the set, the better. But yeah, with, like these have all trained down at least in pairs this year. You know, sometimes you get stuck with one that's behind, or you just don't have enough or whatever. But uh, it's, in my opinion, very beneficial to have sets. Now, do you try to sit behind all of them uh, a couple times a week, or how do you work? Oh, yeah, out? yeah. I mean, uh, not every day, but yeah, yeah. we move them around. I've got a couple good trainers, so, but yeah, I want to, I want, at least usually once a week, I, I, I get behind them all. Have all four been rather easy to break and get to the racetrack? Uh, three of the four, like I say, the one trotting filly who's now doing very well, but uh, she was a little rough. Mm -hmm. And she's still a little, she's not real fond of equipment and things like that, so you have to be careful with her. But uh, yeah, they've been a really good group. Do you, once you get into the process of uh, training the, the youngsters, do you then give them a couple weeks off and then bring them back and start again with them? Or no, I, I generally, it? unless there's a reason to, I, I, I just keep going with them. I mean, we may give them easier weeks here and there where we're, we're not actually training, maybe just jogging. but. I've just never really liked turning them out until, until we get all the way there.
do you drop them in time so much each week, or how do you handle the time? You know, ideally, uh, again, you got to play the weather and, and read the read the individual horse a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know, you like to make a steady, you know, usually once a week drop, and then the other the other training set we usually just back them up and go the same. Training young horses here at Northfield and the weather, the lake effect and such, does it hamper you in some ways? I mean, we're, we're fortunate here that we really, very rarely do we have to miss a day, you know, because of the weather. Uh, the tracks usually opened up pretty good. Now, of course, you're gonna have some days, yeah, you just, you just can't go. And there's some days where, you know, maybe we have to back off our training. This will get out and jog, but, you know, it's just too slippery or too much snow. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's certainly not like being in South Florida where you, you can pretty much make your own schedule and not worry about it. You, you have to work around it some. Do you train the young horses on an off track since they may have to race on off tracks? We're, we go rain or shine, uh, you know, like they're gonna have, like as you said, they're gonna have to race in it someday. So now if it gets really, really deep or something like that, we may not go just because we don't want to, you know, risk injury. But generally speaking, if, if it's that day to go, that we're going. Do you have a certain number of qualifiers you like before they get to the races? Uh, generally two, if everything goes, you know, if everything goes just the way we want it to, uh, two is usually enough to me. Then there comes the process of racing. Do you go right to the stakes or do you like to get a maiden race in them? Well, there again, that, that depends. If they're good enough, I'll probably just go, you know, when we qualify where we want to, I would probably just go right to a stakes race. Um, you know, if they don't quite show you that yet. Um, here at Northfield, it's a little hard sometimes to fill two-year-old races, so, uh, but preferably right to the stakes. When do you find out in this process where they belong? Mm, July 4th, <laughs> which is first Sire Stakes weekend, so that's, that's when the you really find out if they can go or not. A lot of, there's so many of them that can go fast now and until you get them in groups against one another, it's hard to know for sure. Do you mean that you're gonna start them first in the Ohio Sire Stake races rather than the Buckeye? Well, that's, there again, we, we're not there yet. I mean, if, they're, if I think they're good enough, yes, we'll go right to the Sire Stakes. Do you have a set number of races you like your two-year-olds to have in a given season? I mean, generally, I'm not, I'm not going over 10. Uh, I think that's plenty for them. And, and let's say they are a good colt, uh, you know, between your sire stakes, Delaware State Fair, and a final, that's, that's gonna put you around eight, nine races. It may be one fill in overnight somewhere, so. Thanks, Kent. Now let's head into the barn, take a look at the four two-year-olds in the Kent Sherman stable. This is what a message and uh, nice trotter. Yeah, she's a uh, homebred out of Jesse's Messenger. So we have high hopes for her. She's a little behind right now. It's just a real big growthy filly, but uh, I, th I think she'll come around. She's good gated. A lot of people say that they don't want homebreds, but uh, that's a different story with the Sherman family, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, we've, uh, we've always tend to, it, it gives you a little more satisfaction when they do make it. You can kind of get stuck, you know, you're, you're stuck with what you get sometimes if they don't come out looking the way you like, but uh, when they do make it, it's a it's a little extra special. And you've had some success with them. Here and there, yeah, here and there, right. over the years. You're being modest. <laughs> uh, easy to break. Yep, yep, really good, smart, no problem. Do you find the homebreds are easier to break or harder to break than ones you buy at the sale? Oh, they're they're harder in general because any more of the sale horses that you are, you're getting from the sales. They've been handled so much more, and, and they're they're almost ready. Almost all of them, you can throw a harness on and go first day if you want. So, the homebreds are a little ornery just because they haven't been worked with as much. Little personal contact is missing. Uh, yeah, for yeah. them when you get there, was she really difficult, or did she do what she wanted? No, she she was she was pretty smart right away, and and took to it quite easily. What's your feelings on the what the hills? Well, I, I only have two, uh, but I like both of mine. They're both good gated and uh, both have good attitudes, both can trot, so. This is What a Message. This is Luxury Living, another 
filly and another homebred out of the Sherman stable. Yeah, she's out of a mare called Curious Lady who was uber talented, uh, broke a sesamoid at two, came back and when her first started three and broke another sesamoid, so she went to the breeding shed. This is her third foal. The first two weren't great, but I think she's going to be a good one. Uh, no serious problems with her or anything like that? She was a little ornerier. She actually uh, did have a little two-week stint out at uh, West Hershberger's farm to get get her mind right, so to speak. But uh, And she's a little skittish about trucks and things like that, but very good gated, good speed. Would you consider them small fillies? Uh, well, the other one is, I would say, very large. She's on the small side. Yeah. Do you have, uh, going into the process, of course, you don't have much of a choice when they're homebreds, but would you rather have a smaller filly or a larger filly? Oh, I, I'd always rather have the size, but, uh, but I've had a lot of good small horses, but all things being equal, I'll take bigger ones. She got any peculiarities? Uh, nothing too bad. Like I say, she's not real fond of equipment and things like that, so you got to be a little careful about that. But uh, other than that, she's good. Now, is she kind of on schedule, would you say? Yeah, she's very much on schedule, yep. She, uh, she's on, she'll hopefully be qualifying the first week of June. What have you gone with her? 2-6. Uh, 2-6? Two six. Two six. That's pretty good. Not bad. If we can shave off 11 or 12 seconds, we'll have something. You think there's some luxury living in your future? Oh, I hope so, yes. Fear of Delight by Fear of the Dragon. Uh, we've got a stud colt, or Ridgling, I should say. Yeah, we bought him uh, out of Bruce Trogdon's consignment, and uh, he's quite ordinary, but he's good on the racetrack, so we're letting him roll with his one testicle for now. Um, been very good. Been in 210, had a little setback. We had to freeze a splint, but uh, right on schedule and doing well. Being a Ridgeling, that creates a, a few more problems because even if you would want to geld him, uh, that's a very expensive operation. Yeah, you have to do a, do an actual operation, so that there's some extra cost involved there. And at this point, like I said, as long as he's doing well on the racetrack, I guess we'll we'll let it go. Has he been fairly? Does he do what you want him to do? Or is on the racetrack, on the racetrack, yes. In the barn, definitely not. Is that unusual that they're so much different between the two? Oh, I, I think in most studs that are they, that get to they get to keep their, <laughs> their nuts or if they're gonna they're gonna have to do well on the racetrack. I mean, if that's if they're not having a good attitude there, then you got to change something. How much you been with him? Two ten. Two ten. Now. Uh, the pacer, 210, the trotter, you said, what, 26? Yeah, well, he, he was there several weeks ago, and uh, we had to freeze a splint, so we had to give him about 10 days off. So, But he's back on schedule. So So being off those 10 days won't uh, keep you? I mean, maybe a week or two, but, you know, but as of right now, we should be ready to see what we've got for stakes and so on. Fear of delight. Fear of the memory, another fear of the dragon uh, colt. Uh, how's he been doing? Very well. Uh, he actually trained in 2 1 yesterday, so he is very much on schedule. Um, same thing, very good gated, very good attitude. You have two trotters and two fillies, is this, or two trotters, both fillies. So your, your two pacers are both uh, studs. Uh, is there a reason for that, or just well, like you say, the 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 fillies that's that's what we had this year. That's the homebred, so mm -hmm. you didn't really have a choice there. And I like to try and split the group up some anyway. So I looked a little bit more at colts when I wanted to buy a couple of pacers. Now, did you go to the sales primarily to get Fear of the Dragons? Uh, no, no. But I was very interested in them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I have high hopes for them. So. Do you remember? Feel the dragon very well. Oh yeah, obviously. Is I, there any similarities you think? Oh, uh, I, I I think that other colt probably a little bit. I think he travels like that horse did, but uh, this one is a little different. But hopefully there's similarities when it when they say open the wings and say go. If I remember correctly, Fear the dragon was a little uh, lazy, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah. And both of these are, you know, they're. They're, when you, you have to ask them, but they, when you do, they go. 
So they're, they're already doing what you want them to do? Yep. Any problems with it? None. Keep your fingers crossed. Absolutely. On schedule with him? Very much. Yep. Now, has he been better than 210? Yeah, he, he, I trained him 2-1 yesterday. 2-1? So, yeah. Yep. So he's, uh, he's really ready to go, pretty much. Just a little finishing off here. Is there a, such a thing as getting ahead of schedule? Well, sure, I guess you can, you know, but, <laughs> I mean, there's, everybody's different, but yeah. I, I like to try and just have them go where you could, you're naturally working down to when you qualify, that's where you're ready to go, but. I take it then he was very comfortable. Oh, very much so, yeah, very much so, yep. This is Fear the Memory. I'd like to thank Rosie Weaver and Kent Sherman and the folks here at MGM Northfield Park. Uh, this edition of Freshman Focus. We ask that you join us again next week, same time, same place, for Freshman Focus. This has been Freshman Focus, a look at two-year-olds in training across the Buckeye State. Freshman Focus is presented by Sugar Valley Farm, Looking for your next quality standard bred racehorse? Look no further than Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio. And by El Dorado Sayota Downs, now racing Tuesday through Saturday. First post time, 6.15. Freshman Focus is a presentation of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association.